I live in an RV full time. I don't have a house. I don't have a stationary job. And I chose this life 100% and I love it. So today I'm going to tell you guys what my story is and why I choose to be a nomad. everybody, it's Robin with Creativity RV, and today I wanted to tell you guys what my story is, like why I live in an RV. A lot of you may have seen an introductory video that I did when I very first started my channel, but you know, I had like 47 subscribers then, and I know that a lot of you probably don't even know why it is that I chose to live in an RV. So I'm going to tell you what my story is. Basically, here's the deal. I was not a camper. I was an indoor dork. I was a reader and I kind of lived in my you know, own head and I wanted to be a writer. And I, I was a member of the Girl Scouts, but you know, I just wanted to sell some cookies and dominate the cookie selling. It may be surprising, but I had never even been in an RV when I bought my RV. And I had never camped in a tent and I had never been out to like National Forest Land or BLM Land. I didn't even go check it out before I decided to do this, which I wouldn't recommend for everybody, but that's kind of how I roll. In my case, like there, there is for a lot of people, there was absolutely a catalyst that made me choose this life. I like I said, wanted to be a writer. And I got my degree in creative writing and worked as an editor and worked as a literary agent um, and a freelance writer. And I was absolutely starving. So I sold out to the man and went into corporate America. And the entire time I was there for like 20 years, I just kept trying to figure out how I could write full time. It's really hard to you know, work 10 hours a day and then go home and work on a novel. It just wasn't happening. So I kept starting these businesses and I would build them up and sell them so that I could write for a year, but then the money would run out and I'd have to go back and have another job, you know, and then the, like the decades went by. And finally, I ended up getting, you know, a pretty good corporate job and I was making good money. I was living in Seattle and I was working, I mean, just ridiculous hours, but I wasn't really feeling any joy, you know? And I went out to lunch with a coworker, and he insisted that we stop at an Airstream dealership on the way to lunch. I was like, oh my God, come on, a trailer? I just wanted nothing to do with it. And he dragged me along, and we went in and saw an Eddie Bauer Airstream. And I remember that the curve next to the dinette opened up like this to the open air. And I thought, wow, I could write there. I could sit there in the woods and write. And it just became really clear to me that that was a good idea for me. And plus, I asked how much it was, and it was like a sixth of what I had just spent on a condo in Seattle. And you know, like a lot of us, I was not thrilled with this job. There was a lot of moral gray area that I did not like in my job. And I tried to find a way that I could help the people I worked with and still, you know, tow that corporate line and it was hard. So at night, what I would do is I would escape by looking at YouTube videos. Does anyone relate to this? I discovered the YouTube videos because I just wanted to go see more Airstreams. And that's when I discovered that there were people living in their RVs full time. I had never heard of this. It never even occurred to me that this was possible. When I thought of an RV, I thought of like retirees in an RV park, which to me looked like a, a parking lot and something also that I would never want to do. But then I started seeing some other solo female RVers and I learned that you don't have to spend a lot of money to be out on the road. You can be on BLM land like I am right here and I'm here totally for free and that really frees up your budget. So. I just completely dove into research and these videos and I planned and planned and planned. But like I've said before, I was never gonna do it. I probably was not gonna do it. It was an escape for me to leave my corporate life. And so when I got home late at night, I could think about something else. I could be absolutely transported into this idea of being a nomad. But then my sister got sick and we were competitive. We had the same kind of a job. She was two years older than me and we were both in our, around our, our mid forties and she was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. So, you know, the first thing you do is you look that up and you find out that the survival rate is nothing. 
I mean, like 5% survive um, like three years. That's it. So it really put a lot of stuff into focus for me, particularly, um, you know, I went to her house in Connecticut. And she went home to be near my parents where she could get treatment. And I went to her house and packed up her house and met the movers and they put all of her stuff together and she insisted on having her car even though she never drove it again. And I drove her car from Connecticut to Colorado and that road trip really opened up my mind about what I wanted from my life. You get a lot of time to think when you're on the road. And then I spent the last six weeks of her life with her. You know, I went back and forth, I flew back and forth, but the last six weeks I was there taking care of her um, because at that point she was just in hospice care at, in her house. And that's when my sister Terry changed my life. Sorry, you guys. I always get a little, you know, teary when I think about this part because um, she would have loved my life now and she would have been so proud of me. And um, if it wasn't for her, none of this ever would have happened. But what happened was, you know, like I said, my sister was two years older than me and we were laying in her bed and she said, if you had two years to live, would you keep that job? And I said, no. And she said, well, I've always imagined you in Paris with a sketchbook. In fact, I've recorded some House Hunters International for you. And then she insisted that we watch them. And I had never told my sister about the RV thing. Um, I wish I had, actually. But she had a vision for me of me as a traveler and me as an artist um, that I didn't even have for myself at that point. And, um, you know, she said, if you have two years to live, would you keep that job? Because she was only two years older than me. You know, she died at 46. And um, she was just robbed. You know, out of the two of us, my sister was the adventurer. She was the one that wanted to go bungee jumping and, you know, go balls out on a snowmobile. And I was always the careful one, you know. And um, I think it would blow her mind that I'm doing this. But in the moment that she said that to me, it just clicked. And I knew that I was going to live a nomadic life and I was going to be a writer and I was going to do all the things that I dreamed about doing. My sister made me promise her that I would travel to some of the places she wanted to see, you know, like in Italy and Belize and these places um, in Europe. And so traveling was, was really her dream. And I have to say, I feel like I'm traveling for both of us. She would have really loved this. But what happened was, you know, she died, and then um, I lasted six more months at my job the whole time I was planning. You know, I sold that condo that I just bought, and that's how I financed my RV. I was able to buy my RV with the profit from that sale. And then, you know, I needed a job. So I actually moved back to Colorado before I bought the RV and was there for two years planning because I needed to get my finances in order and I needed to have a way to make a living on the road. So I wrote two books, um, romance novels. If you're interested, the link's below. I wrote them because I needed to make a living on the road and I thought I would write like three in a year and it took me, you know, a year and a half to write the first one and then a year to write the second one. And I wrote them and I bought the RV and I hit the road and I've never looked back. Sometimes I like to call myself the accidental camper because I never imagined this life for me. And now I'm out here, you know, chopping wood and I work on the wiring in my RV. And, you know, I do stuff that I would never have imagined. And my mother is like, aliens, what did the aliens do with my daughter? You know, um, it just has completely changed my life. And it's actually made me discover who I am more than when I had a regular office job. When you're, you know, when you're in someone else's world, you change yourself to fit into that world. The paradigm is set, right? You know, well, I was a round peg trying to fit into the square peg in the corporate world, and it felt like a struggle. And then when you get out on the road, at least for me, everything just comes into focus, and you know who you really are. Now, I work really hard on the road. I've got like six businesses right now. <laughs> and um, sometimes I think, what am I doing? Like other people relax. You know, like I still see it as like a relaxing, retired thing. And I do relax a lot. I 
go outside, I go for hikes, and I see wonderful places. But really, um, it's made me discover who I am again outside of my job. And you guys, I love it. And I go to the most amazing places. And I don't see myself stopping this anytime soon. There's just so much to see out here. There's so much to see and there's so much to do. And you can do it on so much less money than you would even think you could. You know, I did a video on budget and I basically can live on $1,300 a month out here. You can do it on so much less than you think that you can. So, you know, if you just want to retire early, like Teresa that I just interviewed, or you want to write a book or, you know, even if you just want to be a camp host or whatever it is that you want to do, you just want to travel, you want to go see, see some museums or something, you can do it in an RV or a van on a lot less money than you think if you boondock like I do. But this is my story, you guys. I am an accidental camper. I didn't mean to do it. And I certainly never thought I would do YouTube and share all this with you guys. But, you know, you open yourself to, up to life and there's a learning curve. You know, it's not like you think it's going to be when you're just watching YouTube. <laughs> but um, this is my real life. And the air out here is amazing. And I make my own schedule. And I get to decide where I go. And I love it, you guys. I love it. And if you're on the road, please tell me in the comments below what your favorite thing is about it. And if you're planning to hit the road, please tell me that too. I know that there's a lot of you out there. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I appreciate you watching. Everybody have happy travels out there and be free.